Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to kick this video off with a couple of pieces of AMD news, the first of which is thanks to Tom, who sent me a link over to the freedesktop.org archive website. And here there is a patch which is titled Add Narve 14 PCID for Workstation SKUs, which is confirmation, obviously, that we will see Narve cards targeting the workstation slash prosumer market. Unfortunately, what the specifications and performance of these cards and how they will differ from the standard gaming variants of the GPUs is not clear with this particular patch. But this does tally up rather nicely from what we've heard recently in other leaks and also tallies up very well with a video I put out in March where a source of mine not only told me that the next generation Narve cards, that would be of course RDNA 2.0, would feature ray tracing, but furthermore uh, my source told me that certain uh, variants of Narve, the first generation, would also be created for workstation purposes. He believe that was things such as video uh, video uh, editing, 3D rendering, that type of thing. So this seems like, well, it is actually happening. I will be curious, though, what the cards are capable of and what their performance will be, and also, of course, how they will differ compared to the standard gaming variant. And now a, another piece of AMD news, although it also does... Uh, cover a bit of Intel thing, uh, Intel news as well, and that is that the CPU ID website has a new version of HW Monitor, which is available, and version 1.41 for Windows now has support for Intel Cascade Lake and Ice Lake, RTX 2070 and 2080 Super. And lastly, AMD Threadripper 3000 has got preliminary support added. This is once again another nudge that Threadripper 3000, at least some SKUs, will launch this year. As a quick reminder, uh, the targeted release date is said to be November this year, although there will be additional SKUs if uh, the rumours slash leaks so far have been right that will launch next year. This next piece of news concerns the AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 3700. It's an 8-core processor, of course, and an entry on 3 d Mark has been discovered by well-known leaker and finder of things, Tim Apisek. The 3 d Mark results tell us that we will see a stock core clock of 3600 MHz and the reported maximum turbo uh, core clock is 4,291 megahertz. That's assuming, of course, it is being picked up correctly. As for the manufacturing process, AMD have broken new ground yet again because they've shifted from not the 7NM process to 7NM+, plus, but instead it is on a 0NM manufacturing process, which is incredibly impressive. They've basically managed to harness well, something akin to a black hole. In fact, probably even more dense, so that's really impressive. In case you can't tell and you're new to the channel, I'm being a little bit sarcastic and it is not being, you know, detected correctly, as is the TDP, which is zero watts, which would be perhaps actually more impressive than a zero NM manufacturing process. Let me know what's more impressive in the comments. Zero NM or zero TDP? But, of course, the 3700X uh, has a 3.6 gigahertz uh, base frequency, and the boost frequency is 4.4 gigahertz. Well, yeah, boost frequency and Ryzen is kind of a... Uh, yeah, well, I'm not even going to go into that in this video. But um, the uh, advertised boost frequency of the 3700X, uh, that is the non-professional version, just to be clear is 4.4 gigahertz and that does have a 65 watt tdp so i wouldn't be surprised if the pro variant does as well next piece of news concerns intel and this is actually not uh cpu related instead this is generation 12 
uh, GPU related, which of course is part of the Tiger, Tiger, not Tiger, Tiger-like architecture. It will also be uh, XE as well. So when you say uh, Intel XE, which is a discrete line of GPUs, which is targeting release for next year, that is exactly the same thing as Generation 12. But from what I understand, XE for discrete GPUs will naturally have additional features because it has a much uh, much higher TDP and, well, you don't have so many space constraints in terms of the die. Anyway, uh, there is a entry on, once again, freedesktop.org, but this is on gitlab.freedesktop.org, and a merge request has been added, and this is really interesting because now the merge request implements support for Generation 12 Tiger Lake ISA in the i965-iris compiler back end. So this basically is the continuation of adding Tiger Lake support to Intel's open source graphics drivers, i965. But what's really interesting about this, according to the post that we have here anyway, is essentially this is the biggest patch, this is the largest rework in terms of the ISA since, well, it debuted about a decade ago now. So what we have is a massive selection of changes across quite literally thousands of lines of code. And this is definitely very telling that while Generation 11 graphics looks pretty impressive, I mean, we've all seen the slides of what Generation 11 is capable of, and obviously... Uh, Generation 11 is part of IceLink, but that doesn't really tell us in terms of the performance leap what Generation 12 is going to be capable of. And personally speaking, I'm super, super curious what uh, Intel will be doing with their graphics hardware, because at the end of the day, having more competition for GPUs is only a good thing. Uh, we all saw how long it took for AMD to give an answer to the RTX 20 series, but with news that we may see Samsung uh, hit with uh, manufacturing issues for its 7nm EUV process because of difficulty obtaining chemicals, um, plus TSMC and Glowflow basically slapping each other consistently with lawsuits at the moment, it may be that we have a war of attrition where NVIDIA are basically in kind of a hurt box for next year. So that could mean that AMD would have a dominant year in GPUs and we may have to see Intel give AMD competition. I'm not saying that's the case and I'm obviously hoping that isn't the case because I want all three companies to be releasing products because that equal good for us as consumers. But at the very least, we kind of have a backup plan with Intel, assuming obviously their products are good, uh, which, well, we, we don't have any products to test yet, so we can't really know that. Regardless, anyway, the compiler seems like it's doing really well at the moment. We have some uh, basic support for OpenGL and Vulkan, and Generation 12 is going to be OpenGL support, which is uh, implemented, at least according to these notes anyway, on the more modern Iris Gallium driver as opposed to the older, classic, whatever you want to call it, i965 OpenGL, and uh, Vulkan GL will sit atop an ANV open source driver, once again, at least according to this information. And in the final piece of news for today, ECS, also known as Elite Group, have accidentally did an oopsie and have leaked the existence of the H470 motherboard chipset for Intel, and this has been discovered on the Sysoft Sandra website, thanks to videocards.com for the hands up. This was actually uh, found a couple of days ago, it was uh, early September, and unfortunately there's not a huge amount of news in terms of what we can find out for the processor itself. Uh, it is obviously an engineering sample CPU that was being tested with this, and it is a 6-core 12 thread device running at a blistering fast clock frequency of 2 gigahertz. Not quite 5 gigahertz, not quite, well, anything at all. It is obviously a very early engineering sample and was used most likely in the purposes of, well, 
for testing it and I wouldn't even be surprised if it was also to kind of hide things so that we can't, uh, uh, just in case uh, it does leak online, so we can't get a better understanding of what this is actually capable of. So anyway, the CPU itself, we can't really learn much. It is being identified, as you could probably imagine, as uh, Intel Genuine uh, CPU 0000 at 2 gigahertz, 6 cores, 12 farads. Once again, it reminds us it's got 2 gigahertz. And the cache architecture is exactly what you would expect for a Skylake derivative. So each of the cores has its own 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. And then furthermore, there's a level 3 cache containing 12 megabytes of your best memories possible. And yeah, but this isn't exactly surprising. That is the not the you know the fact it's an early engineering sample processor. Instead, I more mean that the motherboard exists because ECX ECS excuse me accidentally confirmed this officially already, and have said in a roadmap that, that uh, managed to leak online that the motherboards will launch in the first quarter of next year. So that is, of course, 2020. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then, well, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.